Hi everyone, on today's road trip we're going to look at a 1929 Lincoln L Sport Phaeton. This is a beautiful car, it's a four-door convertible, it's a uh, two-tone car, it's dark green with black uh, running boards and fenders and the black top. And we have Tony with us, hey Tony, Tony's hey. the owner. how are you? Good, how are you Tony? I'm doing well, thank you. Thank you for showing us your beautiful car. My pleasure. How long have you had it? It'll be two years in November that I've owned it. It'll be nine years in November that I chased it. Really? So you've known of this car for a while? Oh, yeah. yeah you were long... hot after it for nine years? Nine years. Um, where did it come out of? This car was originally sold in Pennsylvania to a New York stockbroker. In 1972, as an old man, he finally sold it to the man I bought the car from who had it from 1972 until 2022. So he had it 50 years. I'm the third registered owner. Really? It's a beautiful car. And this is, uh, you were telling me, the original color it was made this in? This is the original color. I believe they called this forest green with black fenders. Of course, back then, most all the cars like this, they all had black fenders and running boards. Yeah. Yeah, this is really a pretty car. I've known of this car for a little while. It was actually at Hershey. I seen it uh, a few days ago, but there were so many people around it. I couldn't really get a good uh, video of it. And uh, Tony, I knew was going to come to this show. We're actually in Lahaska, PA, and I thought I'd have a better shot at filming it here. This car, as you can see, is it's, it's beautiful. Everything's been redone. The chrome, the paint is beautiful. Check out that hood ornament, my Greyhound. I noticed these driving lights, are they? Yes, they're called pilot lights. Yeah, I see on there it says uh, the pilot ray. If you look to the driver's side of the car, you'll see that there's a rod that actually connects from the pilot light, that connects from the pilot light to the steering box so that when you turn the wheel, the lights turn with it. Wow, how about that? Mm -hmm. This is before Tucker, huh? Yeah. Way before Tucker. We had the innovation before Tucker came out with it. Beautiful. As you can see, it's an AACA senior car. Look at that hood on. Very nice. That's a dual side mount. Firestone tires. Firestone gum based. Yep. They're uh, gum dip tires. You were telling me this has a rim around the tire. That's correct. This is a metal rim that the tires mounted on. And you, you, <laughs> you really need to know what you're doing when you go to mount one of these tires. But in most, most of the time, if, if you've ever been to a tire shop where they do big truck tires, they'll put this tire in a cage yeah. and, and do it because if this tire explodes off that rim, somebody's going to get hurt if it's not in a cage. And you would actually just take the rim exactly. off the wheel. Exactly. There's, nine, the wheel there's nine bolts, and you would just take those nine bolts off, and the rim, the, the, the wheel would stay, and the rim and tire come off, and bingo, you put on your spare, and away you go. Although I have to be honest with you. I don't think there's any way I would ever even attempt that. <laughs> if I got a flat tire driving it someplace, if I got a flat tire would, driving it someplace, I would probably triple A. Uh, triple A it. Yeah, I'd be like, hey guys, very nice. Look at this dash. We were talking about this dash. It's got like an engine turn finish to it, but it looks a little bit different. It's almost got like a square, almost a triangular shape to the uh, to the machining. But can I uh, open this door? Can yeah, absolutely. Door? Here, you have to. Go over, we'll take mm -hmm. a closer look at the interior. Interestingly enough, these open cars, which this was considered because there's no roll-up windows. It has side curtains um, made of uh, clear plastic and, and uh, canvas that matches the top. But these open cars, they put linoleum floors in the front and then the floor in the back. Notice the courtesy light as yeah, I open the door. That. There you go. Yeah, it's got a courtesy light on the side. Yeah. Yeah, works on both sides. And then in the back, you had carpeting because, quite frankly, the owner and whoever would sit in the back and the chauffeur would drive. Wow. That's how that was done. And, and you sit about six inches higher in the back than you do in the front, so you can actually look out over the top of the front windshield and the uh, dashboard and see where you're going. I see you have a glove box over here. Yeah, there's the two kit. glove boxes, one on either side. Watch my head, and there's a courtesy light in the back, wow. along with a cigar lighter. Cool. Mm -hmm. 
all these innovations were around for a long time. You think of them on a modern car, but actually... Uh, they were around a long time. Yeah, high-end cars like this from back in the day had them. Look at the two-tone. It's black, dark green with a cream... With a cream colored stripe. Double pinstripe. Mm -hmm. Very nicely mm -hmm. done. And look at the uh, etching on this wing uh, window. Now, you said that was original to the car, right? Correct. Do I mean... We, the these are probably these are no doubt replacement re restored wings, but this would have been the kind of the etching would have been correct etching, for the correct car. would have been you know um, well you know this was a custom coach built car, lock coach manufacturers I believe in Rochester New York um, they only built sixty five of these cars in in nineteen twenty nine, and each one was an individual custom order yeah. so you could go to them and say here's what I want, and they would build it for you. I mean, it, whatever color you want it, it didn't matter. You could have it painted any color combination you wanted. How many do we know are the four-door sport uh, tours like this? I believe they made 60, 60 or 65 of them is my understanding. In this body style? In, yeah, in the sport. Thing. Any idea how many are left? No, Nobody I can't even begin to guess, but I've only ever seen three personally. And you've got the uh, windscreen. The dual the windshield, mm-hmm. Yep, and that's the dual windshield. This folds back. Yeah, this this, uh, this works to keep the wind off of the back seat passengers. Yeah, and then when you're done, if you don't have any back seat passengers, that just folds in and locks up. That's pretty cool. Hmm? Look at the detail, though. I mean, the, the hardware is uh, solid. Uh, the the top looks really nicely made. And done. Yeah, I yeah, they did a fabulous restoration on this car. Yeah, this car was restored by one of the premier restorers in the country as far as Lincolns were concerned, gentlemen, by the name of Jack Passy, who unfortunately has passed on, but he was a phenomenal Lincoln guy. He truly was. Uh, you have a door, I notice, over here. Is this for Correct. the battery? There's a, uh, the battery is there right in behind, that, behind that one, and on the other side is a compartment just like that, which is basically a tool and storage box. Let's look at the back, and maybe we'll swing our way around to the, to okay. the other side. Sure. This is really cool. I always always uh, admired cars like this that had this trunk. But Tony's got something more than just a trunk. Could you open that up for sure. us? Sure. This has a – look at the finish on this. It's almost gleaming in the uh, – Well, the when, they, when they restored the car, he went all the way and restored the trunk. Um, because after all, I mean, this was, this was how people traveled back in the day. Yeah. Um, and so – this is why modern cars have a trunk. Right. It actually, it exactly. was a trunk back in the day. Exactly. It really was literally a trunk. And you've got the matching luggage. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Is that the coolest thing? No, I ever think seen or what? I can pull this one out. I believe. Come out if you want to see the yeah, if you want to see this one, I think yeah. I've got. I may have a. Uh, you're not supposed to see this, but that's okay. We're not looking. I had an emergency toe strap, never been used. You know, that if you break it, let me tell you something. That dirt is software, right? Let me just tell you, in all seriousness, you ever get break, you know, you break down and you need to get pulled off the road. That's one piece of equipment you really yeah. need, do need to have. But I just wanted to show you the idea of how this, you know, how the luggage was it's made, really how it was restored. Too. Yeah. It's now just they're all pretty much all same identical, way. same way. Yep. Even has the same finish on the, uh, the yep. suitcases as it, as does, it does on the trunk. trunk. It is pretty. That's got to be a very desirable option, I would imagine. Well, there was companies that made. Really? Um, yeah, there's so you a. You've uh, uh, gotten a period trunk made for your. Uh, correct. Back in the day. Or correct. Family? I have another one at home that has a um, has a trunk on it, and the tag is the luggage factory in Miami, Florida. Really? They were a custom luggage and, and trunk manufacturer. You had mentioned to me this area back here with the boards was for the golf clubs. Correct. Or, or whatever else you had to haul in store. Yeah. Because this, this again, this body style, this is a sport phaeton, which is about 18 inches. And you can see the, you see the distance here. Yeah. This is about 12 to 18 inches shorter than a standard seven-passenger touring car. This is really only a four or five max passenger car. Yeah. As big as it is. As big as it is. Yeah. This here, this uh, little chrome 
bar, does this come out? That comes out. When you put the top down, this comes out. There's another piece that fits in. This, and the rail This comes all the way out. out. Yeah, this comes all the way out. There's another piece that comes in, and then that rail rests on it when you put the top down. That's exactly cool. correct. Yeah, all right. Now I'm going to have to get that back in there. We can put that in later. There no, you go. We're good. We're good. It's all good. It's all about the details with this car. One of the other options were twin taillights. So, and this actually has a stoplight, a running light, and a backup light. Backup light. It actually has a backup yeah, that's light. That's pretty wild. Yep. I don't think they had yes. that back then. And standard was a left hand, and optional was on both sides. You got the right period 1929 uh, PA plate. Yep, cool. restored plate that goes with it. Lincoln and Continental Owners Club National Award champion, which it also is. Okay, that's what that mm -hmm. is right there. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Look at the driver's side. So the uh, original owner was actually a stockbroker. Okay. And if you know your history, 1929 was not exactly any time after October of 1929 was not exactly a good time to be a stockbroker. So shortly after he bought the car, he had most of the chrome removed. He had all of the Lincoln badging removed, painted the radiator shell black, took the hood ornament off and, and wanted the car to look as plain and as mundane as it possibly could because they were throwing eggs and tomatoes at people in New York City. Yeah. And he would drive this car every day through the Holland Tunnel to Wall Street. Didn't want to be noticed. Or Didn't want to be noticed. That's exactly right. Beautiful. Love the dash. Mm -hmm. Love the – what are these uh, knobs for here? Okay. Throttle. Okay. This is the timing. Gotcha. And this is the uh, lights, the headlights, the headlights, the parking lights. And all that kind of stuff. And you've got two shifters, the one with the black ball on top. That's your standard three three piece bang what I call bang gear because it's not synchronized. Okay. And then the other one is a brake. And you've got a button brake. on the brake. It's a parking brake. That's to release it. To release it, gotcha. Right, to release the brake. And you got here the, again, Etzel Ford called it the six brake system because you actually have if you if you get down and look at it, you actually have four drums, four internal drum brakes on the corners, and then on the back and I don't know if you can see it through here or not. No, it's a little bit hard to see. On the back, there's a band that goes around the outside yeah. of the drum, which is connected to the emergency brake. So if you really had to panic stop, you could push on the brake pedal and grab a hold of that rod and, and give a good pull. There's the other door for That's the, the toolbox. toolbox. Correct, yes. And there's the courtesy light. Let's watch that go on again if you don't mind. You like that, huh? I like that a lot. There you go. It is on. Hey, okay, shut the door. It is off. There you go. Love that. Can you pop the hood? Certainly. Let's see what we got under the hood. I always worry about these type of piano hinge hoods. Well, that's pretty heavy. It's that's pretty not windy going day, anywhere. so we don't want this thing blowing. That's off. not going anywhere. We're looking at uh, what kind of V8? 384 cubic inch flathead V8. What they call because this was long before 1929, was long before the. Uh, Mid 30s when Henry Ford perfected the uh, flathead V8 engine, it was cast. Gotcha. So this was what they called a five-piece block. You had a, you had the crankcase down at the bottom. In this case, the the uh, VIN number stamped on the crankcase five six four seven zero is the original yeah, VIN number of this it. car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you had the cylinder sleeves that bolted on to the crankcase, and then you had the heads that bolted on to the cylinder sleeves, and they referred to it as a five-piece block. I see Delco ignition system. Correct. There's a the wiring uh, going through that tube. Yes, spark plug wires go through wow. the tube. That's pretty cool. And the uh, and the cooling fan on the carburetor. Wow. And the yeah. reason the the, the 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 main reason that that's there is the the problem that you have. Of course, fuel back in the day was really terrible. Yeah. Not like it is today. So the carburetor sits down between the exhaust manifolds, so it gets pretty hot down in there. And, you know, the idea here was, you know, they felt like they needed the. Um, keep it cool. Somewhat. They needed the. Yeah, they needed to try to keep it cool somewhat, but they also needed it to be warm in the, in the wintertime. Otherwise, the car wouldn't run properly. Yeah. So 
that's what they did. They just they came up with this idea, and it does seem to it does seem to work really well. That's good. At least they were thinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it looks very nicely detailed in here. Yeah, I've been, been like driving it and pushing a little bit of well, a little bit of an oil stain. It is an automobile. Well, you know. I guess when you get to be 90 some years old, you're allowed to leak a little bit. Too. Yeah, I'm leaking now, and I'm like quite 90. There's <laughs> another interesting feature. I know you noticed yeah. the pilot lights. You love that. Yeah. These are thermostat controlled louvers, and oh. if I started this car right now and let it sit here and idle and warm up, eventually these louvers would just open up oh, cool. to let the air come through. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And there's your crank hole. Although I cannot imagine, even begin to imagine. Trying, trying to, uh, to crank it, crank that motor by hand. Yeah, <laughs> be a good way to break an arm. Yeah, forget about a wrist. Be a good way to break an arm. Yeah, it's it's a it's a big motor. Yeah, it's very nicely detailed in here though. Thank you. Look at the hardware, the handle. It looks like mm -hmm. everything's been addressed in here. Even mm -hmm. the the small bits are all polished and and addressed. Mm -hmm. the tires look good. These are Firestone tires. Yes. You were mentioning gum dip me. Firestone high speed tires. Uh, we all know uh, Lincoln was part of Ford. You were telling me that Harvey Firestone. Harvey Firestone was a good friend of Henry Ford's. Yeah. As a matter of fact, eventually they were both gone. Both Harvey Firestone and Henry Ford were both gone. But eventually Henry Ford's grandson married Harvey Firestone's granddaughter. Really? Yeah. Shortly after both of those guys were so gone. So you'll see a lot of Firestone tires on Ford's. And you'll Lincoln. see you'll see tons of, of Firestone almost exclusively, one buddy, particularly back in the twenties, thirties, and forties. One 40s. buddy helping out the other buddy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love the little uh, the lines. The, the the it's just cut out in here. It's recessed. Mm -hmm. The belt and line. The belt line and the, and the pinstripe just mm -hmm. follows along that. Yep. This is actually it protrudes. And then it's like recessed in here. A lot of little details like that you don't notice in today's cars. But this well, really it's is, it's an economic kind of a thing. You got the dual spotlights, I see. Correct. Very it's, nice. It's an economic kind of a thing because you know you start doing that kind of detail on a car today. Yeah. Whew, you're talking about a lot of money. Yeah, and they're not pumping out a hundred thousand. No. In 1929. No. 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 Well, sure. I, I love your car, Tony. Thank it's you. I appreciate car. it. Um, I like it. I, I, I'm glad we had the chance to look at it. I know everybody watching this video is going to feel the same way about it as I do. Yeah, we look forward to seeing it, and I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate the fact that you appreciated the car enough to want to film it. I, I do very much. So, folks, tell me what you think. I'll leave your comments below. Definitely subscribe to the channel, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you, Tony. Take care. You're welcome.